This is so exciting and a lot of fun talking to uh, three guys that I feel are just like your best friends almost. We have got Clayton Bellamy, we've got Jason McCoy, and Chris Byrne. Chris's iPad, I love that. And I always like how it comes right up on the screen in case a person loses their mind and they don't know who they're talking to. So how are you guys and always known as the Road Hammers? Doing great. Great. Good to be back. Oh, it is exciting times. Now, first off, I'm going to, uh, we're going to have some fun and get into uh, some different things here, but I want to ask Chris the very first question, and that is, okay, Chris, pandemic times, how did this all come about that Clayton and Jason and you were going to be making some brand new music? Oh, that was just about time. I think a lot of us just kind of, you know, took advantage of this. You know, and we were all sitting at home and, and uh, writing different songs. And Clayton came out, out of the shoot with this one. He said, hey, fellas, what about this one? And uh, I think the first time we heard it, we were it's like, it's a no brainer. This one has got to be this one's got to be the lead single. And sure enough, all these months later, here we are. And we're talking about the How's song. That? The boys are back, right? Yes, the boys are back at it. Written by uh, Clayton and Derek Rattan and Jason Blaine. All right. Well, now that's uh, some stellar Canadian writing there. And of course, it's fun to to get together with friends and write. Uh, we'll talk more about the music in a minute, but let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what you guys have been doing. And it was funny because, you know, you're supposed to do your research and here we are in radio and Jason, you're still doing a radio shift in Aurelia, are you? Yeah. So uh, mornings and, you know, it was Pretty wild because in 2019, you know, I, I had two weekends off uh, of the whole summer. So it was I, by September, I was quite the basket case. I mean, doing full time radio and then touring. Uh, so it's been nice to actually be at home. And uh, now it's it's different, right? When you're used to touring, you're up late, and now you're doing a morning shift. So that adjustment, how long did it take you to accommodate that? Still getting there. Still getting there. <laughs> but you know, I don't I don't really sleep anyway. But yeah. uh, so it's it's kind of those things it's uh, you know it's uh i'm just in a fog all the time but then again i've been that way most of my life oh well there you go so if you're to walk by uh, on the aurelia streets and you run into gordon lightfoot is that going to wake you up you know it's pretty wild i i uh hosted the uh, country music association of ontario awards i've been doing it for several years i'll do it again this year but uh one of the first years we inducted gordon lightfoot into the Ontario Music Hall of Fame. And uh, and he was sitting about three, uh, well, he was the first row, so I'd say maybe 20 feet away from me. And, and we all sang a Gordon song, and I closed out the set by, if you could read my mind up, with Gordon Lightfoot sitting right there. Oh. And I got to chat with him after, but it was the, probably the most nerve wracking song I've ever sang in my life because I was a huge fan, we all understand how important he is not just to uh, you know uh, Ontario music, Canadian music, and setting the the bar around the world, but uh, a super gracious guy. He was wonderful. So uh, yeah, I'm a huge Gordon fan. I almost uh, now speaking of Gordon Lightfoot, I, you know, I almost wonder why uh, more of his songs haven't been covered. And I, I don't know. It's because nobody can quite sing like Gordon Lightfoot. Well, there was that you know, that song there. There was a dance remix out like a few you know. Mm. Uh, if you could read my, yes. you know, you'd hear it all the time in the mall, right? I was like, I wonder if he likes that. I'm like, well, he probably likes the paycheck. But, uh, oh. but yeah, they are such uh, beautiful songs, but they're stylistic, you know, like Sundown and all those songs. I mean, they, oh. they were, um, they're songs that were, you know, written by him for him, and they're, they're a, a style and they're a moment in time. Oh, no kidding. He's, a, he's a, a unique individual and glad that he's ours. Well, everybody knows that the Road Hammers have a distinct style of music, and uh, that truly does make you guys uh, a great band to go see live and, of course, just crank up the tunes as you're heading down the road. Now, I know, Clayton, both uh, you and Jason are motorcycle enthusiasts. Chris, do you ride? Uh, no, I ride a, uh, just a bike. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's as fast as it gets for me. Yeah. That's, no, I'm not. It's the other two fellas that ride. That's probably a safe thing, right? I, I have, uh, we were talking about this here and I said, I do have my motorcycle license, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm a bicycle person too. So, but the, the kind of the mood of the road hammers is that get out on the road and, uh, and crank it up and turn it up party 
Uh, tell us a little bit about that everlasting road hammer feel and, and how you brought that to uh, this new song and uh, the EP that's coming out, I guess you can tell us I, when. I, I think, well, the EP is on its way. We're finishing recording now and obviously the single dro is dropping as we speak. And uh, But I, I think the, the reason why that, that spirit never gets old is because uh, it, it's a feeling that, that everybody uh, can relate to you know, of, of freedom and, and of, of getting out on the open road and, and, and chasing some adventure, uh, wondering where, uh, with the, the next bend in the river is going to take you. And, uh, and that's, that's what we've really kind of always tried to capture. And that's what we, we feel like we did in this new song. Great. Now, uh, Jason, you, uh, you've got some, uh, at least one custom bike. Do you have, do you have more motorcycles at home than you can shake a stick at? Uh, you know, I, surprisingly, I do. I um, I guess I've been I, I'm not collecting, but you know, not consciously. But when we uh, had our uh, TV show, we did a custom bike uh, in Strathmore. We had the the guys out there build this uh, chopper. It's like this, it's it's a massive long chopper. It's all road hammer theme, the paint job and all that, which is a lot of fun. And it's it's I actually just got it running the other day. My son and I we've been working on motors around the farm and. Uh, rebuilt a couple of tractors and things and so that was fun I actually have a bike uh, a Sportster that I gosh I, it's a 1990 and I got it in the 90s and uh, I, it's all done up with a paint theme of uh, Born Again in Dixieland all the notes oh, okay. from that song are in it and um, and it's been sitting in storage for quite a while so we just got it out and got it running actually last night um, but it, then my wife has a little Yamaha and we got it running the night before. So I'm, I'm losing my mind. I got to get back on tour because all I'm doing is working on engines. <laughs> but uh, and then it goes on to dirt bikes from there. But th those are my favorite right now because my son and my daughter, they're into riding. And, and uh, it's something we can do around the farm and just, you know, go out and have a little fun. Oh, sure. And you've been uh, over the years promoting the ride for prostate cancer, correct? Yeah, so Ride for Dad is a very special thing to me. Uh, my my dad passed uh, last year uh, from what, uh, well, he he had had prostate cancer. He's a prostate cancer survivor of 10 years, but uh, a different cancer uh, came to get him after that. But um, so, but it's it's uh, been something near and dear to my heart for a long time and had a lot of friends who uh, have been uh, saved because, you know, early detection is key, just like uh, a lot of cancers. But, uh, and this is one of those things that, you know, it took a long time for us to talk about you know breast cancer it took mm -hmm. a long time for us to get to the point where we can talk about prostate cancer and how important it is for early detection but we've gone from uh, you know uh, 35 treatments down to in some cases you know three and and uh the way things are, are done are completely different psa tests are so easy now so the work that they're doing nationally is uh is truly actually saving lives and you get to see that the dollars raised in the area where you ride stay in that area the research is done and then it's shared nationally so it's it's a true transparent um, organization that really just want to do good right all right well now you know Jason you were mentioning that uh, all of the the bike collection you have now uh, Chris and Clayton you guys can uh, tag off on this during this very unique time that we've been experiencing uh, writing uh, just uh, hanging out at home with family like what have you guys been doing and uh, of course, we all know that musicians are, are just waiting to get out on the road. And of course, all of those people that wrap themselves around the industry. I mean, this, this involves so many people. Uh, tell us about that experience for both of you guys. Uh, well, <laughs> um, I probably, you know, if my wife is watching this, I probably shouldn't say, but I, I have been collecting a lot of guitars. There's a lot of them downstairs right now. <laughs> We're doing a bit of that and uh she also uh, uh she has a list of stuff for me to do you know around the house so you know I've, I've, I've built a fence and a deck and painted rooms and fixed faucets and done all this stuff so it's kind of nice to have this this time right now to be able to take care of a bunch of that stuff so that's what's going on with me no motorbikes just okay. guitar hang on you're handy so you can come out to my house <laughs> and hang for a while if you want. I, 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 did. I had no idea. Hey, hidden talent. Well, I can, uh, I, I, I'm not very handy, uh, but I am a workaholic. I've been, uh, you know, writing and, and recording and producing uh, uh, lots of bands and records and stuff uh, while I've been in, in lockdown. Uh, I think uh, a, a band, uh, 
a Saskatchewan band called Weapons who just uh, finished doing their their record. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously doing lots of biking as much as I can last summer being the first summer off I think I've had as an adult. Uh, it was really a great experience to to share with the kids and be able to do all the stuff that we never get to do because we're we're gone all the time. So we did a lot of uh, more. We don't, uh, did some motocross racing. Uh, we did uh, a lot of camping, lots of traveling around, you know, in the camper and, and hauling the dirt bikes, which was uh, really exciting. So it was it was a, a great summer. Definitely uh, ready to get back at it, though, just like the song, though, and get out on the road and start doing what the hammers do best. Yeah, no kidding. What about, what about you, Gloria? What's your what's your COVID talent? What have you learned? <laughs> what have you been? What have you been? What's your project? Oh gosh, uh, they're all still sitting in my living room. <laughs> Nothing. That's the worst thing, you know. I uh, I have a little Glockenspiel that I I thought I could learn, or I'd be doing some painting or whatever. Nah, none of that happened. But I did have COVID nineteen, so. I'm bouncing you back did. from that. I did. Yeah. And my you 100 101 year old mother had it too and she made it through the other side. So not to the oh, other side, her. but she's she's still good. So to clarify, I'm glad that you're okay. And I, I you you said this really quick, but I, I caught it. You have a glockenspiel? Yeah, I have just a, a little what? one. I could make like the Adam family, like the do, 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 do. uh no, it's the you know the the pieces of metal, and then you just hit the oh, with the little mallet. Mallet. <laughs> so wow. I could make doorbell okay. sounds, maybe uh, customized doorbell <laughs> sounds. When somebody comes to the door, you're like, just a minute. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna. Inter- we might we might call you to help us at the next road. Hammer, oh right? well, I'm hey. With it. Oh, I've always wanted to be a roadie. So I could be a roadie road hammer. <laughs> that sounds like Woody Woodpecker. There you go. <laughs> Rody McRoadhammer. Um, well, Clayton, uh, just before, you know, we jump into the, the new music and stuff, uh, congratulations, too, on your Roots, Alberta Country Music Roots album. That's very cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a real honor to be uh, the, the, first, um, is the first recipient of that award uh, for the Alberta Country Music Awards. <laughs> Uh, with my band, uh, with my uh, that solo project, that album, the uh, the congregation, which was really exciting, and uh, it 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 was perfect timing, just rolling right into into the new Roadhammer record. I I, I couldn't be more fired up to be making music, and uh, you know I'm, I'm we're all blessed to be doing what we love. I I don't have a complaint. All right, so writing with Jason Blaine and Derek Rattan, uh, tell us about. I mean, you guys have known each other forever, so. Um, what's that like when you get together, just kind of throwing around ideas or definitely knowing, of course, what the sound is, is going to be like and, and maybe give us a, a little bit of a hint on the rest of the EP or what you're thinking or like the video because you guys do some amazing work in videos. They're so much fun. And, of course, you get kind of dirty too. Well, I can, I can say that writing with uh, Jason and, and Derek is always a, a great experience. The day we wrote this song, Boys Are Back At It, uh, we were going to Derek Rattan's house. He lives way out in the country and we're driving up this long, like three kilometer driveway. And here he is up on the hill of his house in his tractor in his overalls. And we roll up and he just had this confused look on his face. And then it dawned on him that we were supposed to be writing songs that day. And he had completely forgot. Uh, so it was, it was funny that we actually went from that to writing uh, a, a great song. Um, oh, they're, they're such talented individuals and, um, you know, then to be able to take it and to the guys and we made it really our own and turned it into a road hammer song as only Chris and Jason can can do. So uh, that was exciting. And then I made a, a, a smash a video to go along with it with our friend Travis Nesbitt. Jason, do you want to throw in uh, two bits worth here while we're at it about the about the video or just about the writing experience? I think that's yeah. I think that's it. Like Chris said, now when when Clay first brought it, it was like it's it's obviously a perfect hammer song because it's got it's got all the elements. I mean, obviously it sounds like a hammer song, all the guitars, all this stuff. But the the story, the con, the 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 whole all the lyrics that just speak exactly to who we are. But the cool part about it is that when we got it, we thought, well, this has to go on a record. But but as we're you know going through this EP and we're in lockdown after lockdown and then they had a really long winter and we're ready to get out of that and into mm. spring it's like finally you know this song really you know came to the top as like this has to be the first single because it's all about what we all want to do and that's get back at living and get back to doing what we want to do and that's getting out there and getting back at it 
What do you think is going to uh, going to be that that feeling? And I, I mean, this is for every artist is going to be different. But getting back on the stage and knowing that you've got, whether they're wearing masks or not, and you can't really tell who it is, friend, family, or somebody who you ran into in the, on the road like five years ago or 10 years ago, because, you know, everybody is always like, uh, Clayton and I had a conversation earlier about, yeah, you remember, you remember this? And I'm always surprised artists seem to be really good at that. It's kind of like a radio trick too. Sometimes we kind of like, I remember you. I remember voices more than I remember the visual part because, of course, we're trained for that. But um, what do you think that feeling is going to be like with that first live concert? Mm, I don't know. You know, I think it's for everybody. It doesn't matter whether it's, uh, you know, just a singer songwriter in a cafe or a hammers with big speakers and, you know, at a festival. It's it's going to be uh, a, a little it's a long time coming, right? So, I mean, you got all these ideas. It's like when you're young and you're planning your first band and you're you're doodling the logo, what your band's going to be on your binder and all that stuff, and you finally get to do it. Um, that for me, I, you know, I'm thinking of like Boys Are Back At It. I'm thinking this is going to be the opening song of the set. And I'm thinking then what's going to go into the next one and all that kind of stuff. And just new things you can bring to the show. It's like you got all this new shiny toys you want to share with your friends. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be just uh, pure joy. You know, uh, I, that's only always the the way I've described playing music is it's a place of pure joy, uh, and and I I think that it's going to be uh, very overwhelming when we when we first get back to it. And um, sometimes when you're when you're super busy and and you're you're doing it over and over again, you you can kind of almost take it for granted um, that this is just a thing that you get to do. And then when it's taken away from you, you realize that that how much of a part of it it is of you and how much it means to you. So. I think that getting back to that is is really going to be special. Yeah, we we just did uh, a couple of weeks ago. We did a, a sort of an acoustic performance at uh, Sawback Brewery here in Red Deer, and uh, you know there there was like a moment when we were playing that it was it was magical because you forget you know just just how wonderful it is to play music with your friends you know it's one thing to sit in front of a computer and record and write by yourself but it it's a it's a a joyous thing to to get to play music in in life you know and then that's uh clayton said it perfectly you know when it's taken away from you it's 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 kind of a tragedy really yeah. so yeah i can't wait i mean it's going to be tears of joy i'm sure well, I, that's what I was thinking, that even from a perspective of someone who would go on stage to welcome an audience, you know, at a big festival, that to me is going to be, you know, when you see faces or uh, I think just the rise of the emotion from the, the audience, like people cheering, that's going to be something. Uh, oh, so Chris, you're in Red Deer. I used to work in Red Deer. Uh, David Gilmore, have you bought I, one of David I'm Gilmore's sorry. guitars? Oh really? Um, uh, well, yeah. Um, Gilmore's not bad. He's pretty good. What was that band he was in? I, I don't remember. Pink something? No, I, I don't. I, I have one just like it, but I don't have any of his guitars. No. Oh. Actually, I saw him one time at the Calgary airport. Oh, the, really? the Pink Floyd, yeah, David Gilmore. Ah. Uh. Because there is a. Yeah. I, I used to work with a David Gilmore who builds guitars in uh, Red Deer. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. confusing. I know. That is confusing. <laughs> See, look at me. I'm a wealth of weird. David Gilmore's guitar. Not that I know of. <laughs> ah, that sounds like money maker to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember playing on the wall? Oh, no. Anyway, well, there you go. Yeah, you right, can yeah. you can find Gilmore's guitars somewhere in in Red Deer. Well, you guys, okay. I think that this is super exciting, and the history of the Road Hammers is so cool with uh, so many awards and uh, and the streaming thing. How do you like the way uh, media has changed? Does that uh, kind of worked in the favor? I think it works in everybody's favor, but it's sure different than than spinning vinyl or eight tracks or cassettes or listening to the radio. People are still into the radio, and we love them for that. Alexa, play six twenty CKRM. Well, I think that the the you know we've we've had the like every band you have to change with the times and and uh, and continue be continue that I think that's what keeps you young in in this 
art form is that you're always learning new things. You never stop growing and never and, and creating. And um, now, you know, where where CDs used to be a thing when we were when we were uh, you know selling gold records and platinum records, selling albums. Now we're we're you know looking at at streaming and spins and and these kinds of things on platforms like Apple and Amazon and, and Spotify. And and then of course and of course still with our friends at radio, which are still the the main uh, way to get out. Uh, great country music and and uh, we just have to adapt at the times and i think that this this song again is just perfect for for what we do and and for and for for you guys for our friends to play all right perfect uh anything else you'd like to add to the fans that are going to be watching on our website Oh, I, I, you know, I think just the fact that, uh, of course, Chris and Clay are lucky to be uh, Prairie Boys. I, I was for a little while when I lived in Alberta. I was uh, probably age two to seven or eight and uh, in Camrose. But uh, it's always good to get out to the prairies. You guys have, you know, the most beautiful summers and you got longer nights where we can have these festivals. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to when we get back on the road to not just see uh, the, the people and places, but make sure I bring my family with me. Because like Clay was saying, when it's taken away from you for whatever length of time, uh, you really want it back. Now I want to share that with my kids as well. So you know, one of the places I want to make sure they spend some time are the prairies. Guys, anybody else? Absolutely. Well, we can't, we can't thank everybody enough for supporting the band over uh, 17 years now. We've been uh, the road hammers. And we're going to keep cranking them out as long as people are going to keep cranking it up. So uh, we can't wait for you to hear the new song. And message us, Instagram, Facebook. Let us know what you think of the song and uh, pass it on to your friends. And most importantly, crank up CKRM ah, all the way to 11 and check out The Boys Are Back At It. Gloria, Gloria. Thank you. Yes, That's all I got. Well, I, Chris, I'll leave you with the last word, although that was pretty tricky there, uh, Jason. I, I Now no. I've got the earworm. That's Sorry. a tough follow. I just thank you to everyone for their patience through all of this, and uh, we're coming back strong, I promise you. Amen. All right, the Road Hammers, thank you guys so much, Clayton and Chris and Jason. We will be spinning this brand new song. The boys are back at it, and it's going to be one of those songs that's going to last us through the summer and beyond. Thank you so much, you guys, and can't wait to see you on the road. That's awesome. Thanks, Gloria. Love you guys.